Hi, I'm Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly and I've come to test the new Arcona 385. She's a beautiful boat and I can't wait to get out and sail her. Now the five on the end of the name uh, denotes that this is an update of the original Arcona 380, uh, which was first launched 10 years ago. Now we tested it for Yachting Monthly at the time and our boat tester, sadly not me, said that in 30 years of sailing it was the best feeling boat he had ever sailed. Now that's a, a pretty big claim to make, uh, so this boat's got a lot to live up to. Essentially the, the hull and the rig are, are, are the same as the original 380 and there's mostly minor tweaks on board her. Uh, but it's quite a bold thing to do to relaunch a boat that is effectively a 10 year old hull. So I'm really keen to see if she's stood the test of time. Now this is a proper sailor's boat. She's a performance cruiser and probably if you're looking at it, she tends more towards performance. She's not an out and out racer by any means, but she's sleek and powerful. And some of the things that you'll notice when you look at her to start with is that she's got a really fine bow, really fine entry. She's got quite a, a rounded hull. She hasn't gone for any of these modern hard hull chines or really full bow sections. And she's moderately beamy, but she's not gone really wide like some other boats and she's still got a single rudder. Um, but that all plays together to make a, hopefully, a really balanced boat. So I'm gonna see what she feels like on the helm. And she's got a good powerful rig. She's got a, a Selden spar with two spread of rig. And she's got a, a Cascade purchase backstay so that you can really adjust and set the boat up just how you like it. She's got loads of power to handle, but like a, a well-tuned touring car, she's got all of the control and the finesse that you need to stay in complete control. Well, starting at the bow, we've got a, a permanent fitted bow sprit that's got two attachment points for oft wind sails and you can see that it's got a little bob stay and that houses the anchor roller as well, bow roller. You've got a stem that's a few degrees off vertical so it's not quite gone for the modern aft raked bow that some boats have gone for. You've got below deck furling and then as we walk aft you see this nice fine entry, fairly low top sides and a really good big open foredeck uh, that's clear to work on and a really sleek low coach roof. Now a couple of the updates that you'll notice, you've got larger hull windows, you've got one here and one further aft that increase light below and similarly the coach roof windows have been increased as well um, and then you've got two flush mounted hatches on the coach roof as well and a little bit of teak there around the mast uh, and then coming aft there's a few tweaks in the cockpit as well and we'll step aboard to have a look and we'll get out for sale. We've got 14, 15 knots of true, so that's a good solid force four. Over the deck, we've got about 20 knots of apparent wind, so uh, we're fully powered up. We've still got full jib, full main, haven't put any reefs in, and we're just in the process of getting her nicely balanced and feeling just right. I mean, she's light on the helm. I'm moving the helm a bit because it's a little bit wavy. But I mean, it's finger light. It's, uh, she's not loaded up at all. The uh, 48 to 1 backstay is really nice and powerful. So if I do get overpowered and I don't want to put a reef in, I can just pull a bit more backstay on. We've got inhaulers on the jib. So we've eased those out a little bit to open up the slot. And that just keeps the boat feeling nice and responsive through the helm. And this boat really talks to you through the wheel. If you've got too much jib tension on, too much inhauler on, or not enough backstay, it might get a little bit heavy. You pull the backstay on, ease the jib out a tiny bit, and she lightens up straight away. It's just really easy and enjoyable to get her in the groove. You can just sit here for hours watching the telltales, keeping her moving. 
And we're doing between sort of six, six and a half, nudging up towards seven, upwind a little bit. We've had her up to seven on close haul today. I was in slightly flatter water, but she's just going really nicely. Just settling her on course now after that tack. Let's bring her up onto wind a little bit. So, uh, so far today we've been sailing at about 25 degrees to the apparent wind. Seems to be her sweet spot upwind. Uh, that's about 40 degrees to the true, true wind angle, 40 degrees. So she's a really weatherly boat. Sitting to windward feels really nice and secure. So you've got foot chocks on each side. So you can get a whole range of positions you can stand in depending on what's most comfortable. Now we've also got this 48 to 1 cascade purchase backstay. So if I need to depower, I can just pull that on. That just lives back there. So that's really, really handy. And I can just take the power right out of the rig if I'm getting overpowered. We've got twin wheels. They're carbon, carbon wheels, so they're really nice and light. You don't get any lag between the wheels. And it's on a Jeffa steering system. And uh, the gearing set to uh, lock to lock is two full turns of the wheel. Uh, it feels just about right, so I'm not having to move the wheel much. I can just keep her in the groove upwind, so uh, that feels really good. And then I'm standing on top of two lazarette lockers. Now on the 380 model, the previous version of this boat, there were seats aft of the helm. So a sort of a partially closed transom. They've gone, and that does two things. It takes a bit of weight out of the stern of the boat, equivalent to having somebody stood, extra stood on the back of the boat, lifts the stern out and improves performance. And it also increases the usable space in these two lockers. When we get back in, I'll show you inside them. We've got a life raft under where I'm standing, access to the steering quadrant, and uh, emergency steering access just here as well. Now, it's still pretty windy, 16 knots of true. And actually, I've, I've tried as hard as I can to make this boat lose her grip. Now, she's only got a single rudder where a lot of boats these days have twin rudders. But actually, keeping the sails sheeted right in, I've borne away and got her completely overpowered. And I can do that now, I'll show you. If I bear away a bit, you'll see the heel increase. I just said there isn't a hint of letting go, even when we've been hit by gusts that I wasn't quite anticipating. The helm will load up a little bit, tell you that you're overpowered, and you'll hear a little bit more noise astern as you make more turbulence with the rudder. But so far, I haven't managed to let, make her lose her grip. We haven't broached or spun up to windward. So uh, that's the benefit of a, a sing, really deep single rudder. You just have brilliant, brilliant grip on the water and a really immediate feel on the helm. We've borne away onto a run now, so it's a good time to have a quick look around the deck layout while we're underway. So the cockpit, we've seen the helm station. Forward of that, you've got two uh, winches. You've got your primary jib winches there, 46 self-tailing Harken radial winches. And those are right next to some rope bins there and a locker there which gives you loads of stowage space for the odds and ends you always have in a cockpit. The seats are one meter 60 long, so lots of space to put your feet up. It's quite a wide cockpit, as you'll see, but there's a nice foot brace here in the middle, which keeps you secure when the boat's heeling. And underneath that, we'll lift that up in a minute, and you can see there's a, uh, a cockpit table there that props up and folds out. And there's also these hatches, windows here for the uh, aft cabins to give lots of light down below. A couple of really nice details that show this is a proper sea boat is the, uh, the companionway hatch. It's quite high up, so if you get water in the cockpit, it's not going to go straight down below. And then two really solid um, pad eyes for hooking on your uh, harness tether for your life jacket. So if you're out in bad weather, you can hook on before you come up on deck. Little features like that really make a difference for a proper sailing boat. 
either side of the companionway, you've got two uh, 40, size 40 winches uh, with your, all of the clutches ahead of them and rope diverters so that you can take, if one winch is busy with a halyard for example, you can take any of these lines across to the opposite winch. That's a really good little detail. And then we've got four instrument repeaters and a magnetic compass for steering. That all sits nicely inside this very neat stowage for the uh, spray hood. That's down at the moment. We'll pop that up in a minute and you can have a look at that. Um, but that goes down underneath this cover so it's, it's completely out of the way. Looks really nice and neat. Right, stepping out of the cockpit. Nice wide side decks. Um, really unobstructed. You've got lines coming aft here for the uh, towable jib cars. Uh, you can hold on to the spray hood and then you've got grab handles here. There isn't a, a grab handle here uh, in, until you get to this one, but actually the spray hood's quite good for holding on to for that. Here you've got the German main sheet system coming down from the boom and coming aft to the winches just ahead of the helm. And one of the little performance touches on this boat, you'll see it a bit better when we're going upwind, but you've got in haulers for the jib sheets comes here and that just alters your angle of seating really easily which means that you can have a really good pointing angle upwind. We were doing 25 degrees to the true wind. Uh, at the mast, nice little bit of teak here so it's good grip if you're having to do anything at the mast. Um, there isn't non-slip on the coach roof but I mean I'm wearing deck shoes and that's not a problem at the moment. Uh, you, you can have non-slip on there, that is an option that you can tick if you want to but most owners find that they don't need to. Right and then onto the foredeck as you can see it's a really wide open foredeck really unobstructed you've got this lovely sleek coach roof that's really low comes down almost to nothing and leaves you out two and a half meters of open foredeck to work on if you're doing downwind sails and that kind of thing. <coughs> We've got under deck furling for the head sail. You can see the furling line comes forward here and then onto the hark and drum that's inside the anchor locker. Good big anchor locker, but it's full of fenders. We'll take those out and show you around shortly. And then you can see we've also got this nice bow sprit with two attachment points for off wind sails. We haven't got any off wind sails on board at the moment. We're waiting for them from the sail loft, uh, but that's where you'd rig them either a code zero or an asymmetric spinnaker and the bowsprit also doubles up as your bow roller for your anchor as well. We've got a pretty powerful rig on this boat. It's uh, a 20 meter tall mast, uh, Selden aluminium spar which is keel stepped and we've got a twin spreader set up on a 7 8 fractional rig uh, and then as I mentioned, you've got the uh, 48 to 1 purchase backstay. So you've got plenty of control over the uh, mast bend if you need to depower the sail at all and keep the uh, forestay nice and tight upwind. Uh, this boat, I mean, you've got a choice of whichever sail maker you want to use. This boat's been fitted out with uh, one sails, 40 forte sails, which are HMPE, which is like Dyneema. And the whole thing, the film, the fibre is made of the same thing. The idea being that they are fully recyclable at the end of their useful lives. We've just dropped the sails and I've got the engine fired up. On this boat, she's fitted with a Yanmar 40, 40 horsepower engine. The standard for the 385 is the uh, 30 horsepower Yanmar, but all of the boats that are imported into the UK, at least, have the upgrade to the 40 horsepower engine and that has loads of power. At 2,000 revs we were going along at six and a half knots. At two and a half thousand revs we got to 7.4 which is not a million miles off hull speed and then flat out at 3,000 revs we were doing eight knots but actually somewhere between two and two and a half thousand revs is more than enough for motoring in and out of the river or cruising longer distances under engine. At the stern of the boat, I'll just give you a little walk around because there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. We've got this uh, sugar scoop stern, nice open transom, little height off the water, uh, and then a really good long bathing platform that just clips up 
So that's also your safety ladder because you can um, pull that down if you're in the water. Stepping up into the cockpit and you can see the benefit of the open transom that you no longer have these lockers here. So it's really easy access to the water and a really nice open space. You've got these two really big lazarette lockers. And they open that way. You can come and have a look. And this one's got lines, uh, boat hooks, anchors, uh, it contains the diesel heater and it also gives you access to the steering quadrant. Midships, you've got emergency steering just there, open that with a winch handle. And then on this side, again, we've got a life raft and a few spares for the dinghy, but quite a lot of stowage that goes all the way out to the side of the boat. Uh, moving across here, you've got gas locker it's just got one single camping gas bottle bottle but there's an option to have a, a second bottle in the bow locker uh sorry in the anchor locker which also drains overboard and then you've got on port you've got shore power stereo speakers and on starboard you've got the engine throttle engine controls here and you've also got rather nicely i can pull it out a little deck shower once you've been for your morning swim, you can wash off and then step aboard and have your coffee. So we've got the uh, table legs out now. They all stow under the cockpit sole here. So we've lifted that up. These legs just uh, screw on. Then the tabletop, if I can do this right now, that goes on there, that goes on there. They just slot in there like that. And then you've got this good big table that opens up. Um, and you can easily sit six people around that for dinner. Hold that away and you can still plenty of space to move around the cockpit. Coming forwards you've got the uh, companionway hatch covers and there's just a nice really simple little stowage there just underneath. They drop in. They're perspex so they still let light down below and they lock securely there. As you can see We've put the spray hood up uh, and it's a reasonably sleek profile. It's not too high so that when you're standing at the wheel, you've still got an unobstructed view forwards. Uh, it's nice. You've also got these uh, Perspex panels at the sides, obviously the windscreen at the front and one at the top at the front. So that as you're hoisting the sails when you're cruising and this is up, you can look up and see what's happening with the sails and it comes far enough aft that a couple of crew members can sit at the front end of the cockpit, forward end of the cockpit, and they'll be nice and secure out of the weather. So just have a look at the anchor locker and the bow area. As I mentioned, you've got the furling line to the under deck furling drum, which you can access inside the anchor locker. And you've got a really neat bow sprit there. You can see with the bow roller built in and the anchor tucked up really neatly underneath that. Just before I open this, you'll notice that you've got this gray deck and this is really uh, a nice touch that our Kona do. This is gel coat, proper gel coat, and that's molded in in gray into the mold uh, before the boat's laid up. And then they lay up the gel, white gel coat underneath that and then the fiberglass on top of that. So this is part, structurally part of the boat. So it's a really solid and also really kind under the foot uh, grip deck. Um, I think actually I prefer it to a teak deck if I'm honest and it's probably a lot easier to keep clean. Inside the anchor locker, again on a gaff strut, this has to be one of the tidiest anchor lockers. You've got your electric windlass here with remote and then you've got a good deep anchor locker section there. You can see you've got a, a little baffle in to keep the anchor chain neat and there's a decent drop beneath the windlass uh, and where the anchor piles up and then you've got space uh, when we went out today we put eight fenders in there so that's a really large locker that you can put loads of lines and fenders in and keep them hidden and out of sight always nice to have a good big anchor locker at the front so we're down below now i've just come down the companionway and you've got uh, four steps here. They're not too steep. And as I said, a reasonably high lip there to climb over so no water comes down. And two good 
handholds here, particularly for going up into the companionway, and a decent one on the companionway hatch as well. You come down to port, you've got this really generous galley for a 38 footer. Um, it's J shaped, which is quite nice because it's uh, reasonably secure. There's a little bit of bracing there. So if you're on port tack and you're healing that way, you can brace that way. You've got a two burner Eno gas hob here and oven. Uh, that's gimbal, good pan mounts. So that's all really sensible. Crockery stowage behind. Again, another bin in there, bottles and olive oil I think we've got in there today. And then lots of locker space in here for your plates, food, all that kind of stuff. Now, unsurprisingly, you've got a really good fridge space in here. And it's a double fridge, stocked up with uh, Danish beer, I think. I'm not sure the Swedes would approve. The baskets really help keep that space organized and then a double sink under there, so that's a really good space to be working with. We don't have a splashback across here to protect the cushions. That might be a nice little touch. I'm sure it wouldn't be difficult to add on. We'll just stop getting the cushions wet. And then there's a whole load more stowage in the galley as well. We've got um, pan locker under the oven. Lots of utensil space in here, including drawers for cutlery. You've got four of those. Nice little touch is the pull-out chopping board there. Nice hardwood chopping board. A bit more workspace there. And then under the sink, you've got your bin area, bin and cleaning products. So that keeps that nicely out of the way. So once you've made your cup of tea and passed it up to the watch keepers up on deck, next thing you might want to carry on with the uh, out at sea theme is the heads. Now you've got a really ample heads compartment in here with a sea toilet with an 80 litre holding tank. You've got a shower that's hidden behind the door with a sump drain. You've got a locker under the sink, nice sink. And then um, just outboard of that, you've got a, a good big hanging locker for, for wet kit for your oilies so they don't drip everywhere. And then just forward of the heads, you've got the chart table. Now the two main chart plotters, um, all of the electronics on board are B and G, and this one's got Zeus S3 12 inch chart plotters which are networked together. But if you want to do chart work, you've got a little forward facing chart table here. It's big enough for an Admiralty folio chart, so A2, and they will fit inside the, the, the table for stowage. So that's really good. You've got your little light, We'll turn the little LED light there, which folds down neatly. You've got your VHF radio, and you can put a command mic up in the cockpit as well if you want. And then all of your switch panel, stereo, um, diesel heating, control panel, and all of the electronics are there. Now this is a really neat little feature, look at this. If we pull this off, when you're in harbour, you're gonna want more seating space. This is just on friction. The whole chart table slides aft and there's a little infill which goes in here and that makes this berth into a two meter 40 long sea berth or additional berth for crew members. So you can potentially sleep another couple of people on board on this side and on the port side of the saloon. We'll leave that there for a second. The seating in the saloon is um, sea berth seating to port and you've got a really nice um, mahogany table here uh, in the middle and that lifts up locks into place and then you can easily fit with the other leaf up as well you can easily fit six people in and there are plenty of lockers in the saloon for little bookshelves these ones open more book storage for all the there you go it's all your jams and spreads perfect and then under the two bunks you've got water tanks under this side uh, 200 litres of water and 150 litres of diesel in a stainless steel tank on the starboard side. That does mean that stowage under the berths is a little bit limited. You've got good stowage in the galley. There's a little bit of stowage behind these settees here. At the moment we've got the uh, upholstery covers, waterproof upholstery covers, access to some of the systems, but you can fit a fair amount of extra kit in there as well, food or whatever you need just behind those 
And then this is an update for the 385 from the 380 is these much larger hull windows, which give you a really nice eye level view out on both sides. And I noticed that when I was helming, I could actually see the horizon from the wheel all the way through, which is just a nice little thing. Reading lights, and this is a, another little touch that I quite enjoy. All the reading lights have got little USB ports. And as everybody's got phones that need charging now, having enough USB points is always an issue on a boat. So you can turn the lights on and off, but there's a little USB point to charge your phone. Put the table away. All right, I mentioned before about the rig, and we've got the, uh, the keel stepped mast here. And something uh, not entirely unique to Arcona, but a really distinctive selling point of Arcona's, is the way they create rigidity within the hull. So the hull is made from vinyl ester resin, vacuum infused into a Divinacell 20 millimeter core, which is really light and really stiff. Um, it's sort of top end products. But further to that, rather than a fiberglass matrix for the keel, you've actually got a galvanized steel matrix and a beam that runs all the way across, which takes all of the dynamic loads for the rigging, the mast, and the keel. And we'll have a look just under one of the floorboards here. And you can see in here, I'll have to show you in a second, but there's a big galvanized steel beam that runs all the way up and down. Only slight downside with this table is that you can't see the keel bolts, but you know with, with the, the steel matrix, you've got a really rigid uh, structure there to support all of the loads. Moving forward, now one of the things that you'll notice on a, an Arcona is that the top sides are not too high and the coach roof is nice and sleek. Slight downside of that is that you do lose headspace as you go forwards. I think we've got about five foot eight in the forward cabin here. So it's not as much as you might get on some other boats, but the advantage of that is that when you're helming, you can see whether you're standing on the leeward side or the windward side, you can see all around you. So this boat is really built around sailing. And actually I'm just over six foot and I can stand in here not uncomfortably. I've got a seat here for dressing or changing. And we've got a really good large V berth in here and underneath that is all stowage. We can have a quick look. So we've got loads of stowage, there's some charts under there. We've got lots of locker space under there, which is really good. And the front of that is accessible with drawers, which is a nice touch. And then to starboard, I've got hanging locker space. And to port, we've got a locker space shelves in there. And again, we've got reading lights with USB ports and a nice opening hatch here. It's locked at the moment, but a really big, good big hatch that lets in loads of light. So it's a really pleasant space to be. The owner of this boat has opted for the three cabin layout, which means that you get a double cabin, starboard and to port. There is an option for a two cabin layout, in which case you would have a toilet compartment and a shower compartment separately, and then you would have access into an enormous aft locker. There would be a door here, and you'd also have a lift up locker lid in the cockpit. But let's have a look inside this cabin. There's ample standing headroom. That's over six foot, probably about six two, six three, about 190 in metric. And then we've got locker space in here, hanging locker space. Access to the aft end of the engine, more reading lights. We've got good big opening hatches. That one opens into the footwell of the cockpit and there's another opening hatch up at the top there at head height. So you get good ventilation. And then you get the second of these really large hull windows. So that even when you're down below, you get a really nice view out. So one of the ways of telling the quality of the workmanship on a boat when you're looking at buying either a second hand or a new boat is to have a look at the behind the electrics panel to see the attention to detail. Now, there's absolutely nothing to fault in here. All the wires are immaculately laid out. Everything's labeled up, really neatly done. Separate live feeds to all of the switches. So if that goes, it doesn't knock all of the switches out. And just a little detail to notice in here 
this white line down here, if you can see that on the video, that shows that this bulkhead, as with all the bulkheads on this boat, is laminated into the hull and into the deck so that they become a structural part of the boat, making the hull stiffer rather than just being bonded in, stuck in with glue. Finally, let's have a look at the engine space. Companionway steps come up on gas struts, support the weight fully. In here, as I mentioned, you've got a uh, Yanmar 40 diesel. Uh, all our Konas, there's an option to have electric um, propulsion now, which would be an ocean volt system uh, on a 48 volt uh, power. Um, quite a few Arconas have had that done. This one's opted for the more conventional diesel. But as you can say, see, it's all laid out really sensibly. Um, all of the service points are brought forwards. You've got um, fuel filter, water separator, coolant header tank, and then a nice little touch here on the anti-siphon loop for the water intake. If any water comes out of the anti-siphon, rather than just draining into the bilges, it goes into this little drain bottle here, which you can then dispose of later. Uh, but it means that the bilges stay completely dry and clean. There's access to the engine space as well from the aft cabins, so you can get at the engine to work on it. Um, and then oil filler is there. And gearbox, is that gearbox? Well, there's another oil fill there. Um, and the alternator is mounted here. So you can actually get it everything that you need to really easily. So what do I think of the Arcona 385? If you hadn't guessed it already, I like this boat a lot. Then again, you'd hope so given the price tag. She sails beautifully, she's fast and powerful and she's well mannered. She looks amazing, the finish is top notch and the accommodation is comfortable. So what's not to like? There are a few tiny niggles that I'd like to change. There could be better handholds on the coach roof. The boom is just at head height for anyone six foot tall or more. And I'd like stowage for two gas bottles aft rather than having one in the anchor locker, ideally. But other than that, it's hard to find fault, really. So why wouldn't you buy this boat? Well, one of three reasons, probably. Firstly, she's a performance cruiser. She'll give you a huge amount of sailing pleasure but she has a lot of power. It's beautifully controlled and she's a forgiving boat to sail, but if you're a beginner or you just don't want that level of sailing, then she might not be the boat for you. Secondly, she's primarily built around sailing first rather than accommodation. The accommodation is lovely, but there is a bit less volume and particularly forwards, there's a bit less headspace than you might get in other cruising boats of this size. Finally, and perhaps the uh, the biggest reason is that she's really not cheap. The base price for the boat, excluding VAT, straight out of the yard, is 3,373,000 Swedish krona, which in May 2022, which is when we recorded this film, was roughly 272,000 British pounds, or 335,000 US dollars. Add on the extras and the boat that we've tested today would set you back around £425,000 or in dollars, $520,000. Now, that's a lot of money, but she's a great boat. If you're in the market for a new 38 footer, there are plenty of boats to choose from, but if you've got the cash, you'll struggle to find a faster, more enjoyable cruising boat than the Arcona 385. Thank you.